I was 15 when I realized something was wrong with me. I wasn't particularly happy at my high school, but that wasn't it. My grades were good. I was captain of my football team. I'd recently shaved off my really long hair and the girls seemed to like the new tough look. I realized though that things were definitely not right because I was hiding something from my friends and family and it wasn't good. For a year, I'd been wandering through a place that I didn't know how to describe and didn't realize was certainly not normal. Whatever normal is when you're 14 or 15 or 16 or 48 for that matter. I felt pain pulsing through me, not physical pain, although sometimes the ache was so intense I couldn't breathe. This pain was a deep sadness that burned just under my skin and made waking up in the morning so hard, falling asleep at night impossible. The pain I felt beat through me had become so intense that in the last year I'd taken to cutting my arms to try to release it, this sadness from my body. I have the scars still like pale ghosts on my skin. And hear me when I tell you that they never were or are something to be proud of. There is little pride in self-loathing. I went to great lengths to make sure no one would see what I was doing to myself, wearing long sleeves even in summer, not letting anyone reach out and touch me for fear they'd feel the rise or dampness of the freshly made cut. I was hiding, hiding from this pain that I didn't understand, from emotions so intense that I believed they controlled me and not me, them. And this pain must come to a head. I came very close to making the final and worst mistake ever on my 16th birthday, taking my own life. But that's another story and I've only got a couple of minutes left. When it all became too much and my secrets were finally discovered, I was forced to see someone, a psychiatrist. I fought it, this idea of talking, of exploring my emotions. But you know what? It was okay. I found out over the course of painful and scary and beautiful and enlightening years that I suffer from depression. I'm okay telling you that because I so desperately never want any of you to feel that taking your own life is the answer. Guess what ended up saving me? When my dark secret was finally discovered, I began writing. At first, I just tried to put to words what I was feeling. These feelings, these words, they became lyrics for songs, and then poems, and then short stories, and then eventually, novels. And what I discovered was that this new way of releasing what hurt just under my skin was so much better, so much more powerful. Secrets I no longer wanted to hide, but instead share with the world. Jump ahead now 25 years to 2009. I'm officially a successful novelist, having just won Canada's biggest literary prize. Thank you. I'm traveling the world and meeting tons of interesting people. That's exactly when what I call the darkness came back. My wife Amanda saw the change that came over me. It was as if the color left my skin, like I was slowly being drained of the life that pulsed through me. Amanda told me, speak out rather than turn the pain inward. She told me to vocalize it, write about it. Maybe, she said, this might help someone else. And so I did. It's not easy to tell people about your weaknesses, but even if one person hears my message and it helps them climb out of that hole, it's all worth it. I tell you this because mental health issues like clinical depression or ADHD or bulimia and anorexia, autism or social anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, drug and alcohol addiction, any of these illnesses, all of these illnesses, unfortunately carry social stigma. But they shouldn't. We don't make fun of or ostracize people with physical health issues, do we? You got a cold? What a loser. I can't be your friend anymore. I heard you have cancer. I'm sorry, but I'm never going to speak to you again. You broke your leg? Apologies, buddy, but I just don't understand what you're going through, and I ask that you not come near me. My suggestion to you all here today, 
let's treat mental health issues like we do physical ones. With kindness and empathy, with concern and care, one in four of us will face a mental health issue at some point in our life. The time has come and arrived to think differently about something that can affect any of us at any time. And if you feel the hurt I speak of, I urge you to choose the healthy release, the artistic or creative or physical, the positive release. There is such beauty in the world, and so much of it is inside you, just waiting to come bursting out. Thank you. Miigwech.